Hi, my name is Jeff, and I'm going to give an introduction to the Bitcoin scripting language. The slides uh, uh, will present, if you will, my idea of starting from the beginning, looking at computing and computers as function execution units, talking about the various components that comprise this uh, language, talk about Bitcoin transactions a bit, uh, review what they are and how they look and what's under the hood, talk about how the language is able to uh, perform what it needs to do uh, for transaction, uh, validation, verification, etc. Uh, by way of an example and just seeing how it all goes together. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually think about and revisit otherwise known ideas. And, and what I mean by this is talk about computers as function execution units. Really think about well, what, what is it that a computer is uh, doing. And I'm going to be using a von Neumann lens or von Neumann lens. What's that mean? Well, this is a very classical approach uh, towards understanding how computers conceptually operate. Input comes in, uh, uh, input, I should say, comes in. The computer acts as a function, uh, performs work upon that input, and out gives an output. Um, I really think it's kind of interesting. You know, the Bitcoin has forced me to reevaluate all of my, you know, previously known constructs uh, with regard to uh, institutional societal knowledge such as what is currency etc but Bitcoin the technology also has forced me to really reevaluate what I knew or what I thought I really knew about computing and computers uh, and, and I think really understanding this need to step back really allows us a historical perspective uh, to understand this new technology now again, I think it's funny that you know in order to leap forward, we have to really step back in time, uh, looking at the birth of modern computers and how these uh, were originally envisioned. I think understanding the history of these tools helps uh, in, in some measure to understand how to properly use them. What were the architects of these tools initially thinking about? How did they envision how the flow of these uh, uh, devices. And, and I, I talked about von Neumann, uh, and so I'm talking about the idea of Johnny Axe, Illy Axe, all the Axe. Really, what was the first real digital computing platform and, and how they were to operate, how were they to execute functions? And so that means we have to, you know, really step back and, and talk about uh, you know, things like the stack. You know, this again differs from the heap, uh, whereas the heap is, you know, a dynamic uh, space. The stack is not. Um, this is the memory where execution will take place, last in, first out ordering uh, of data, as well as operations in a highly structured allocation, deallocation process. Uh, basically, we can think of this as where data, and, and or rather, I should say, your program and data exists in in which they are pushed onto the stack and then popped off the stack in a very uh, prescribed manner. Bitcoin script will use two of these, the main and alt stacks. So what about script? Well, first off, it's going to be a fourth-like programming language. Fourth being a, a, a highly procedural stack-based programming language. Basically, again, drill down logic. Uh, it's been around since the 70s and continues to be used today. It's been ported to nearly every platform out there. Again, Bitcoin will use two stacks, uh, main and alt. Furthermore, script uses reverse Polish notation and RPN. If you've ever used an HP calculator, even the Prime, <laughs> you know that it is by far the best way to use a calculator. Uh, of course, if you haven't, most people uh, or would say that maybe it isn't, but I think so. I, I really uh, think that once you get accustomed to using uh, RPN, it's, the, the, it's a joy to use a calculator. What is that? Again, you're uh, pushing onto the calculator stack, your data, and then you perform operations. In Bitcoin's case, these operations are comprised of these op codes. Script uh, is Turing incomplete. Uh, we'll talk a little bit more about this in a minute, uh, but you know, great 
thought question, or uh, what are the six primitives that make up a Turing complete computer? So what exactly are we trying to accomplish with script? Uh, by and large, it's a validation of a Bitcoin transaction, or rather of the Bitcoin transactions on the network. Bitcoin, the currency, lowercase b, will have conditions uh, that must be met in the future in order for these UTXOs, in order to, for them to be moved about uh, through this idea of a locking script, uh, which for the most part today is uh, encapsulated within the script pub key. This is the majority of the, the, the uh, transactions out there on the network. The script that meets those conditions, or, or what they are to, to unlock this value, to allow it to be moved, uh, again, for the most majority of uh, uh, the transactions out there currently would be the script uh, SIG. Bitcoin clients uh, are running this locking and unlocking scripts in order to ensure that each script is valid uh, and that each transaction is permitted. Also, it should be noted that as of right now, as of today, uh, in 2015, there are only five standard uh, transaction types or patterns if you're running, uh, or rather if you try to uh, push onto the network, one that is not uh, one of the five, it will not be uh, relayed. You can, of course, still get them in there. Uh, you just have to send them to a miner that's willing to accept non-standard scripts, uh, uh, I'm sorry, non-standard transactions. And if they were to solve the block, uh, may include these non-standard transactions within the solve block. So it is still possible. Great time to revisit this idea of Turing incompleteness and why script is not Turing complete and why you don't want it to be. Well, first off, I just said the script, uh, the, the reason, or rather what its role in this uh, ecosystem is to ensure that transactions are valid, that these uh, locking and unlocking scripts are valid. So if every single uh, Bitcoin client is running script and, and validating all of these individual scripts uh, that are locking or otherwise unlocking, well, you want to make sure that they all terminate. So you cannot have looping. Uh, if you have looping, it's potential that a transaction could get into an infinite loop. Uh, this would, of course, uh, harm the overall network if the uh, uh, individual uh, computers running the software were unable to execute out of that particular loop, that transaction loop, and, and that would bring down the, the entire network. Now, there are other uh, uh, blockchains out there that do permit, or rather are Turing complete. Uh, right now, there's Ethereum uh, and then Eris Industries, uh, as well as a number of other ones. Um, and so they have different uh, designs that allow for Turing completeness um, and, and basically are aware of and are uh, sensitive to the potential for infinite looping and they have different ideas of how to uh, overcome these. So let's talk about um, what exactly is a transaction. So here we see a script sig uh, followed by script pub key. So here again we have the idea of the unlocking script followed by the locking script. Again, the reason why the order is important is we have last in, first out on the stack. So in this case, the locking script would be the first thing that is operated upon. The unlocking script is the last. So let's look at what, what all that is. We see in red here, this is the uh, uh, unlocking script, and then the blue, of course, is the uh, locking script. Now, in this case, uh, please look at the notes. There's a, a, a blog entry as well as another set of slides that go into detail uh, about this particular transaction in, 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 in better detail, I should say. Uh, again, in blue, that's not the entire uh, lock, locking script. Uh, rather, it starts with the 19 being the hex code for 25. So the 19 right after the, uh, uh, the dark blue 40420F, etc., that 19 refers to pushing onto the stack 25 bytes that follow, those being 76, A9, 14, 
etc., we'll see that those are in fact the opcodes uh, followed by uh, more data. So we'll talk about this a little bit more uh, later. Let's let's delve into an actual example of how this script, or rather these two scripts, I should say, are executed. And we're going to use the standard transaction um, that is uh, uh, used in the majority of Bitcoin transactions today. That's pay to public key hash, P2PKH. This is, again, by far the most common um, transaction out there. This is just one party paying uh, another party. So let's take a look. Here it is. It's Bob's uh, signature followed by Bob's public key. Uh, then we're going to perform an operation in which we're going to duplicate. Then we're going to do a hash 160. We'll see that's not just uh, a one uh, hashing, but rather it's a composite of two SHA-256 followed by RIPE-MD-160 uh, hashing. Um, uh, then we'll push onto the stack Bob's public key hash. We'll see if, again, what we just did is equal to the Bob's public key hash we push onto the stack. If it is, that will return true. That will then allow us to check the signature. So let's go, let's let's deconstruct this uh, uh, step by step. So first things first. What are we going to do? Well, we're going to put onto, or rather, I should say. Uh, push onto the stack Bob's signature and Bob's public key. Next, we're going to duplicate that public key. Um, now, we're going to perform uh, uh, some cryptographic hashing of that public key. Again, the specifics are uh, uh, the two SHA-256 followed by RIPE-MD. Afterwards, we now have on the stack Bob's public key hash, i.e. the Bitcoin address. We're now going to put onto the stack a copy of Bob's public key hash, the address. And we're going to ask the question, are these two equal? If they are equal, we're going to see that they're going to return a true and go away. resulting in Bob's public key and Bob's signature being left. We can then check the signature if that returns true as well. We have, in fact, a valid transaction and nothing is left on the stack. This, again, uh, is just a quick overview of one of these uh, transactions. There's a great tool out there, a uh, Bitcoin script integrated development environment. Uh, IDE, and it, it shows you how you too can put uh, data, opcodes, etc., onto a virtual stack and, and see it being operated upon in real time with the uh, visualizer. So, yeah, de definitely check this out. It's a great tool. You can put uh, uh, whatever you want and actually see what's going on under the hood uh, as it performs its various functions one at a time. Again, the idea of uh, using a von Neumann. A, a lens in which a computer is thought of a, a function execution unit performing one thing at a time. Uh, again, I think that this historical perspective really grounds us into understanding the, the architecture underneath Bitcoin script. So what are these uh, operations that are possible? The operations possible are right here. You can uh, see this, again, just taken directly from the official wiki, we see that uh, the op returns uh, are given various uh, hex uh, codes. We actually saw in the example shown a little bit prior, after the uh, 19 hex, or rather 25 bytes pushed onto the stack, we saw 76 followed by an A9, A9 being to uh, hash 160, that is uh, hash uh, uh, first with a SHA-256 and then do a ripe uh, MD-160. Hmm. Again, you can just check this out, uh, see what uh, op returns. Uh, as of today, uh, there's just about a handful of these. So check out some of the resources we have uh, uh, available to us today. Uh, I, I think that uh, the Script Explorer is uh, a great uh, um, a blog that explains 
and, and also as a otherwise uh, another visualizer to see how script works. Um, a JavaScript script interpreter um, was, was pretty good as well. And then, of course, uh, Mastering Bitcoin uh, in Chapter 5 goes over this uh, process quite, uh, quite well. Hope this cleared some of this up, and I hope you enjoyed it.